Hey, this is Personal Pre-Med here with a quick video guide on how to get into medical school for the non-traditional student or career changer. My name is Mitchell. And I'm Dan. We were both non-traditional career changers ourselves, went to medical school, graduated, and are currently resident physicians. And the way we were able to do that is through pre-med post-bac programs. So what is a pre-med post-bac program? It is a one to two year program where the goal is to prepare you for medical school. So you take science courses, biology, physics, chemistry, organic chemistry, biochemistry, everything that you need in order to get into medical school. Usually it also comes with uh, MCAT advising. They usually have clinical volunteering opportunities to because that looks good for medical school. And at the end of it, you may or may not get a certificate. But ultimately, it doesn't matter because hopefully by that point, you're in medical school. There are two different types of post back programs. There are career changer programs and academic record enhancer programs. The basic distinction between the two is that the career changer program is for those who have not taken any science classes, though there are some exceptions. Maybe if you've taken one or two courses, you'll still be allowed in versus those that have taken science coursework in undergrad and did not do very well in those courses. Today, we're gonna to exclusively be talking about career changer programs. So what are the advantages of doing a post-bac? Well, first off, you can take the coursework very, very quickly and get up to speed to enter medical school as quickly as possible. As we said, this could be as short as one to two years. Second, dedicated advising. Having a dedicated advisor could be essential to getting you into the medical school that you really want to go to. Third, linkages. Some medical schools allow post -bac programs to directly link into their medical school, which has you avoid what's called the gap year or the glide year between the post -bac program and medical school. Fourth, volunteer opportunities, getting set up and having volunteer opportunities already set up that will help enhance your clinical experiences can be very beneficial to getting into med school. And finally, prestige. Going to one of these programs, especially one of the top-notch programs, carries with it a fair amount of prestige and could really help you in the med school application cycle. So what are alternatives to post -bac programs? Well, you can always do it yourself. And there are two ways. You can either go to a community college, go to a state school, or, or you can ask your alma mater if they will let you take continuing coursework there. The advantage of doing all of your science coursework at a community college is that it's fairly cheap and easy to enroll in. However, the coursework is not regarded as being as rigorous as other places by medical schools, and therefore it's not as favorably looked upon. They also tend to have poor advising. For taking all of your science coursework at a state school or your alma mater, this is more favorably looked at by medical schools it tends to have variable advising and usually costs one to two years worth of tuition. However, it's not as well regarded as post-bac programs actually, which is why post-bac programs are probably the best route to get into medical school if you are a non-traditional career changer. So how do post-bac programs actually evaluate applicants? Well, first off, they use your stats. The stats that they use include your GPA, as well as any test scores that you have be they from high school with the ACT, SAT, or if you've taken the GRE, the GRE, they'll use that too. And basically the reason they do this is to make sure that you're good at taking tests and that you actually are good at doing your schoolwork. Next thing that they evaluate is your volunteering, your shadowing, and your clinical experiences. And this is really to demonstrate that you're the sort of person who wants to become a physician and has a, a deep interest in helping people as well as knowledge of what going into medicine looks like. The third thing that they evaluate is how unique you are, what sort of diversity you bring. As a non-traditional student, you already have diversity from the regular traditional applicants because you didn't do the regular pre-med path. What a post-bac program really wants to know is what differentiates you from everyone else. Next, they look at the personal statement. And this is really where you get to tell your cohesive, compelling story to demonstrate that you're serious about medicine and where you can really connect the dots of your uniqueness, the specific volunteering, shadowing, clinical experiences that you've had, your course of study, all together in one really nice little ball. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, uh, well, I guess there are two more things. One is the letters of recommendation. 
the letters of recommendation are really just to demonstrate that there are people who will vouch for you and who will say nice things about you. And finally, the interview. The interview, if you get to the interview stage, they already like you. They already think that you're a great candidate on paper. And they're just trying to figure out if you're a normal human being who can have normal human being conversations and isn't super weird and uncomfortable to talk to. So a common question that we get asked is what's a good GPA? And there's not a lot of data out there from programs about this. Johns Hopkins actually lists one. You can see that average is about 3.8, a little bit less, 3.78. And, but they have quite a range from 3.15 all the way up to 4.0. I would say that the range here is actually a little bit broader than a lot of the other programs. Some other programs, you're unlikely to get in with anything less than a, a 3.3 or a 3.4. And even at Johns Hopkins, it's unlikely for someone to get into the program with less than about a 3.3 or a 3.4. Uh, but just a heads up, there has been a lot of grade inflation over the last 10 years. So it's harder now than it, than it used to be. One, one thing to keep in mind here, these ranges that are used of the GPA and what's considered a good GPA or a good standardized test score, everything is variable. What the post -bac programs are ultimately looking for is interesting applicants that they think are good bets to get into medical school. So there's no hard cutoff. If you've done some really interesting things, or if you have some really unusual diverse experiences in your background, you still may be a good candidate. It is a little fuzzy around the edges and there's no one size fits all for the non-traditional pre-med post -bac. So now let's talk briefly about the application timeline. You're going to want to check each program's website to see when they're going to start and stop accepting applications. Programs tend to start rolling admissions in the late summer, early autumn, and then this continues up until February, March of the next year. You'll typically hear from a program within four to six to eight weeks, depending on how many other people are applying at the same time. And then the programs actually begin in May, June of the following year. And the site that you use to access all of these applications is the post -back CAS system. So how should you evaluate a program? Well, a lot of different ways to do it. First, something that's not really talked about much is location. If you want to be near your family or friends or a partner, definitely something to consider. Next is the number of students in the actual program. Some of these programs are as small as 10, 15 students or as many as 500. And that definitely will make a, a big difference in your actual experience. Next is the student to advisor ratio. How many advisors do they have per student there? Is this a one to 50, a one to 100, a one to 30? that can play a role in actually how much advice you're gonna get. Program length can make a big difference. If you're trying to get this done as quickly as possible, doing a two-year program is not as good as doing a one-year program. Are these classes actually going to be with undergraduates or are you going to just be with other post -bac students? Price can be a factor. Linkages. Linkages are a way for you to directly move from the post -bac program into medical school the following year. Different programs have different numbers of linkages. It's important to know not just how many linkages a school has, but also does that post -bac program have a high success rate of getting students who are attempting to link into medical school or not. Next, attrition. This is something a lot of people don't talk about. Some programs have very low attrition rates, which they do not publish. Others have very high attrition rates, which they also do not publish. MCAT prep. How is that incorporated into the post -bac curriculum, or do they even have MCAT prep at all? It's definitely something you're going to want to ask about and look into for each of these programs. And finally, culture. This is something that's a little bit harder to get a sense of, but speaking with students in the program, talking to graduates of the program is a way that you can get a sense of if this is a collaborative community that you want to be a part of, or if it's more of a cutthroat people competing for grades type of community. So here we have a list of our top five career changer post -bac programs. They are Goucher, Bryn Mawr, Scripps, Hopkins, and Columbia. If you're interested in more information like this, be sure to check out our, our website. We'll put the link down below. And here we have laid out the number of students, the student to advisor ratio, program length, 
whether the classes are with undergraduates or not, the price, number of linkages, and the acceptance rate to not only medical school, but also dental school and veterinary medical school, as well as the attrition rate. Anything with an asterisk is something that was gathered from student report rather than something that is written on the school's website. All right, so some common questions that we get asked. What if I've completed previous science coursework? Well, this is really on a case-by-case -case basis. If you've done all of your coursework, you're not going to be eligible for a non-traditional career change or post -back. But if you've done some of it, or if it was a long time ago, it's worth reaching out to the programs individually and letting them know what your situation is. This actually serves two purposes. It lets the programs know that you're actually very interested in their program and puts your name in their memory banks. And then it also will give you an answer as far as whether your previous coursework is eligible for admission. So for these next three questions, how many programs should I apply to? How early should I apply? And how much volunteering, clinical experiences, and shadowing do I need really depend on your personal situation? If you're somebody who has a lot of volunteering, clinical experiences, and shadowing, if you have a very strong GPA, great test scores, a great come to medicine story, you should apply as early as you can. It's rolling admissions. You can apply to a few programs, hear back, and then decide if you need to apply to more or not. If on the other hand, you do not have the volunteering clinical experiences and shadowing needed, you should wait a little bit longer to apply and potentially should apply to more programs if it's a little bit later or if your GPA stats are a little bit on the lower side. But unfortunately, the answer to this is it really depends on your personal situation. If you're interested in speaking with us to get more personal advising, feel free to shoot us an email. We'll have our email listed below or send us a message on our contact page. And finally, what percentage of your advisees get in? Well, for applicants who use one to two hours of our services, almost 100% of them have gotten into post -back programs. And for a list of which post -back programs we've gotten people into, you can refer to our webpage and you can also shoot us an email at personalpremed at gmail.com if you have any other questions. Thank you for watching and Godspeed.